Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Thank you so much for checking out the video today. We got a good one for you today. It's a question that I get all the time. I get emails from parents, I get emails from coaches, emails from throwers. Everybody wants to know what is the best discus that they should buy based on rim weight. Everyone has questions about rim weight. You've got catalog companies and online companies that sell their discuses based on rim weight. And you wonder to yourself, what do I get? I throw this far. Should I use a 70%, a 72%, a 68%, a 75%? So we're going to explain rim weight to you today in a way that I have never seen done before. We're going to do something that you are never, ever, ever supposed to do with the discus. We are going to take a discus apart. This thing is like 200 plus dollars, brand new, but we're gonna be taking this discus apart to explain to you exactly what rim weight is. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what is rim weight? So rim weight is always based on a percentage. So if you have a discus that is 68% rim weight, that means that 68% of the total weight of the discus is made up of the rim. So really easy math. We're going to use a one kilogram discus today. This one kilogram discus, let's say for example, it was 75% rim weight. That means that 75% of this one kilogram discus so 0.75 kilograms is the rim, and the other 0.25 kilograms is made up of both side plates, both of these bolts, and anything else that might be inside. So when you think of a percentage or a rim weight percentage, it is actually the percentage of the discus that is made up by the rim. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now what does rim weight do? Well. As you take an object like a discus and you put more weight towards the outside, so towards the outer part of the discus, that discus has the potential to fly a lot farther than a discus that has more of a center weighting with a lower rim weight. So the higher the rim weight, the higher the potential that the discus is going to go farther. Now I say potential for a very, very good reason. That is because you need to be able to throw the discus with a lot of skill, with a smooth release, and apply a lot of spin, a lot of rotation on the discus when you let it go to take advantage of that higher rim weight. And the opposite side of that coin is also very true. If you have a high rim weight discus and you attempt to throw a high rim weight discus and you do not have the skill to throw it, you do not have a smooth release and you do not apply a lot of rotation or a lot of spin on the rim when you throw it, it may actually hurt your distance because it's going to wobble in the air and it's not going to fly as far. So ultimately what you want to do is you want to get a discus that is going to fit your way of throwing at this very point in time. So if you are, for example, a brand new beginner thrower, you've been throwing for a year, maybe less than two years, let's say, you need to get something that is a little bit more of a moderate rim weight, something that's going to be in that, say, 60% rim weight, 50 to 60%. Now, if you take, say, 50 throws with something super, super high rim weight, and you're a beginner thrower, three, four, maybe five of those 50 throws are going to fly really nice, and they're going to go farther than your center weighted discus. But do the math. That means one out of every 10 throws, five out of every 50 throws, let's say one out of 10 is going to fly farther. The other nine out of 10 or 45 out of 50 are going to wobble and not go as far. If you're not experienced enough to throw this, you're not going to have consistently good results with it when you go to a track meet. 
When you go to a track meet, you only get three throws. If there's finals, you get six throws. If one out of 10 are good, who's to say that one throw is gonna show up in your first three throws? All three of them might wobble like crazy, might look, look like a wounded duck getting shot out of the air and flop right down to the ground. You can't afford to do that if you're a beginner thrower. So you need to use a lower rim weight discus. If you are an elite thrower, top of your state, top of your county, top of your region, you're a top collegiate thrower, you're qualifying for your regional meets, you're qualifying for NCAAs, you think one day you're gonna go to Olympic trials, you're a school record holder, you're a very, very good thrower, maybe eight out of 10 throws are gonna come out really, really well. That's when you can use something like a high rim weight discus because you know when you get to a meet, if you only get say three throws and then you go to finals, two out of those three throws are gonna be really good, really smooth release with a lot of rotation and it's worth using something like this. Okay, so let's do the thing. Let's, okay, this discus, first of all, I did not buy this discus. This discus, I'm pretty sure, is probably about 15 or so years old. Um, a girl that I coached throughout high school and then college gave me this discus when she was done with her throwing career, when she was done with college. So she gave me this discus. I did not buy this discus. I don't even know if this, if this discus would even weigh in at a meet, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh the discus, we're gonna do a little bit of math. I got my phone out to use the calculator to find the actual percentage. We're gonna do the math and we're gonna figure out what the exact percentage of this discus actually is. I have two scales. The first scale is a food scale. It's a very accurate food scale that I use um, and let's take a look. This is measured in grams, and this discus weighs 1,000, oh boy, that's really close, 1,013 grams. So 1.013 kilograms. Now, if I weigh it on this, I guarantee you it's not even gonna go that far. This in kilograms is popping up as 1.00 kilograms on the button. Hopefully you guys can see that. 1.00 kilograms on the button. So I would not even chance taking this to a track meet. If their scale was just one one hundredth of a kilogram, just one gram off, it wouldn't weigh in. And now this one right here, this is basically you start off at 0 0.05 pounds. Um, it's good up to 200 kilograms, 440 pounds, but basically less than 50 grams and this thing won't even pick up the weight. That's why we're using the food scale to get accurate. So 1.013 kilograms. All right, so here we go. Allen head. We are going to unscrew the bolt in the middle. Oh, hopefully I can unscrew it. There we go. Unscrew the bolt in the middle. Remember, don't ever ever, ever do this with a discus. Once you take these things apart, it is almost impossible to put them back together. So there is one bolt. Eesh. Here, why is this not unscrewing? Ah, here we go. Here is two bolts. Woo. This is a little bit scary. So let's take a look. Here's two bolts. Come on. Okay, that's like 250 bucks down the drain. There is two bolts. We've got one side plate right here. You can see the inside has a little bit of like a pinwheel kind of shape where maybe a little bit more protection, maybe a little bit more impact resistance by having that little pinwheel shape. You've got this little connecting piece, this little connecting bolt that goes in the middle. That basically is what these two bolts screw into. Put that right there. And then you've got, covered in dirt, the other plate right here, which goes on the other side. They're basically identical. And then you've got the rim. Now the rim, you can see, is kind of thick. If I look in the inside, if you can see that, it's kind of not hollow on the inside, but it's been machined on the inside so that the majority of the weight is gonna be on the rim. 
Now the real question is, what is the actual rim weight percentage? We knew it was 1.013 kilograms, okay? 1.013 kilograms. So if this actually is 88%, this should be about 0.88 kilograms. Okay, let's take a look. It weighs, yeah, that's actually not too far off. 865 grams, so 86.5% rim weight. That's not bad at all. That's very, very accurate to what it is sold at. So 86.5% rim weight, it's sold as 88%. Are they lying? No, they're not lying. Um, the one kilogram, the 1.6 kilogram, and the two kilogram might all be off by a fraction of a percentage. And just to prove to you, we're gonna load up the rest of it. Here's the connecting piece. Here's one bolt. Here's the other bolt. Here is one plate. Here is the other plate. And we are at 1.013, just like it was before. So the sum of all the parts equals the total. So when you take away the plates, when you take away the connecting bolt, when you take away the two Allen screws, the two Allen bolts, we are at exactly what it was before. Okay, so the real question here becomes, what is the big difference? Like if I went from something that was say 86.5% and I wanted to get it up to 89%, what, what's gonna be the huge difference if we were to jump up from 86.5% to 89%? What is the huge difference? Are we talking a massive, massive difference in uh, distance increase? Are we talking about a massive loss of control? Is it gonna wobble that much more? Well, let's take a quick look here. So, as we said before, when we zero this out, we are at 86.5% percent rim weight, 865 grams. So we need to add, if we wanted to get this up to 89%, we need to add 25 grams of weight. So what I have in my hand are some dimes, nickels, pennies, and quarters. We're gonna try to do it. Let's add in a quarter, 87.1, 87.7, I just dropped some change on the ground. 88.2, 88.7, 89.1. So there it is guys, 89% rim weight just by adding in two quarters, two nickels, and a penny. That's it. That's the difference between something that's 86.5% rim weight and 89% rim weight. Two quarters, two nickels, and a penny. That's it. So, does it really make a difference? Does it really matter? That's, I guess, the big question is, does it really, really matter? If you were to, say, throw an 86.5% rim weight, and then you threw an 89% rim weight, are you going to see much of a difference? So, say you did over the course of an entire week, you took 100 throws with the 86.5% and 100 throws with the 89%. And you just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You threw one, then the other, one, then the other. You did 100 of each, back and forth, back and forth. Would you see a big difference in distance? The answer to that is going to be absolutely not. You're not going to see a massive difference in distance how far these things fly when they're that close in percentage. Now, you're gonna have some outliers. You're gonna put one in the cage. It's gonna happen. You're gonna throw one in the woods. It's gonna happen. One or two or maybe 10 are gonna come off your fingers and be a little bit wobbly. It's gonna happen. But when you take the average distance of the 86.5% and the average distance of the 89%, are you going to see a difference? Absolutely not. You are not gonna see a difference. Now. If you are an advanced top level high school collegiate Olympic trials, Olympic level world championship caliber thrower, and you threw something that was 50% rim weight, 
against something that you would normally throw, which is going to be in that 85% rim weight, are you going to see a difference? Yes, absolutely. Because we're dealing with like 35% change in rim weight. Of course you're going to see a difference. But at the same time, if you are a average thrower, you've been throwing for a couple years, you have been getting some good distance, you're a guy, you're throwing 140 feet, you're a girl, you're throwing 120 feet, 110 feet, you've been putting in the work, you've got a couple of years experience, couple seasons under your belt, and you wanna get better, and you, right now you're using something that's say 65% rim weight, are you going to see a big improvement by going up to a 90% rim weight or an 86% rim weight? It's tough to say because it's all personal preference. The physics makes sense. The math works out. You go to a higher rim weight discus and you throw it perfectly. Like if it was a machine that could throw them perfectly every time, yes, the higher rim weight is going to go farther. But you are not a machine. You are not going to throw it perfect every time. So if you are a average thrower, that means on average, you've got some good throws. That means that maybe if you throw 140 feet, some of your throws go 120, 125, 130 at practice. Maybe some of your throws go 141, 142, 143 at practice. But on average, when you get to a meet, you're throwing about 140 feet, 138, 139, 140 when you go to a meet. You need to throw a discus that is suitable for you. If you are a high handicap golfer, and you are just a, an average or below average golfer, you cannot use the same golf clubs as the professionals that you see on television. They are way less forgiving, they are way harder to hit, way harder for you to actually control, they're gonna be way too stiff, way too small, it's not fit for you. You have to buy a discus that is fit for you. You need to get a discus that is going to fit what your capabilities are right now at this very point in time. All right, so that is the big lesson behind this, guys. And it took taking apart a 200 plus dollar discus when it was new to convince you guys that high rim weight is not always going to be the best choice. You've gotta make sure you get a discus with a rim weight that is suitable for you. We just started carrying the all new uh, line of discuses from Fibersport. So Fibersport is a company that I trust in 100%. Their discuses are in stock, ready to ship. You guys can click the link down below to purchase your Fibersport discuses. We think they are better quality and fly better and are better designed than the Nelco USA. They're more durable. A lot of the top level throwers really love them and we want you guys to check them out as well. All of the rim weights, all of the distances are up there along with a distance chart. So make sure to click the link down below to check those out and get yours ordered in time for the season. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you haven't done so already. Let me know what questions you want answered on this channel and I will get to them in a future video. Thanks again and I'll talk to you all real soon.